many thanks for joining in, everyone. This is Politics Today Live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Okimbalo in Lagos. Let's get to it, everyone. Let's begin with the na from the nearby state here, Ogun State, uh, where the Commissioner of Commerce and Industry, Bimbo Ashiru, has joined the governorship race under the All Progressives Congress in the build up to the 2019 governorship race. Bimbo Ashiru emerged winner among other eight contenders from Ogun East. Senator District of the state it was selected through a consensus process after uh, a meeting called by the four member selection committee of the Jebu Remo Governorship Agenda Forum, party leaders from the Senator District. And President Muhammad Buhari has returned the nation's cap to the nation's capital, Abuja, after spending two days in the southeast region on what may be described as a region uh, tour. But before he left the region, the president took part in the APC political rally in the number of states where he spoke about his gov government's plan to improve infrastructure in the state. But let's quickly give you uh, a breaking news coming right here on Channel Television. Troops of the Nigerian Army have reportedly engaged Boko Haram terrorists in a firefight in Sabungari village, a community between Gulak and Madagali town in Adamawa state. The village is said to have come under attack this evening by the insurgents who are said to be using heavy weapons. Breaking news right here on Channel Television. Troops of the Nigerian Army have reportedly engaged Boko Haram terrorists in a firefight in Sambugari village, a community between Gulak and Madagari town in Adamawa state. The village is said to have come under attack this evening by the insurgents who are said to be using heavy weapons. Stay with us for details on that. Let's continue with some of the political stories we are telling you. In a related story, uh, the President Buhari has ordered the immediate return of Governor Obiano's security aides earlier withdrawn by the police. The Senate had earlier ordered Inspector General of Police to restore the security aides attached to the Governor. Well, on Tuesday, Obiano raised the alarm about the withdrawal of his security aides, describing it as a sign of what will come in the coming days. Well, and the governorship race in a number of states has shifted a huge attention, not just to the state, but also the southeast region. Almost every politically aware person is weighing on what this election means for the people of the state. A former central bank governor, Professor Charles Soludo, who was, uh, has also contested for governor in the state, he is a fan of the incumbent governor, Willie Obiano. I sat with him in an exclusive interview in Arcadia, Nambra State Capital, and started by asking him about his interest in, interest in this particular election and his favorite candidate. The progress that has been made in the last several years, and especially during the Governor Willie Obiana's um, tenure, I want to say that a lot is at, uh, at stake, that every person who truly loves an state, who actually loves Nigeria, should be interested in what goes on in Anambra to make sure that Anambra doesn't go back to Egypt, as it were. So your interest in supporting Governor Willie Obiano is not done out of your own personal interest. <laughs> Personal, my personal interest is to see the advancement of Anambra State. What I mean is, would you like to become a governor of Anambra State one day? I had contested to be governor of Anambra State. I think that is, um, that's known, that's, that one is a fact. Okay? And I set out to contest for governorship of Anambra precisely because of what I just said to you a moment ago. Whether or not I become governor, and let me put it in context. It doesn't really matter much. The reason I wanted to become governor is what I said to you, to make sure that we can turn Anambra into a Dubai, Taiwan. And when I endorsed Willie Obiano, I also made it clear that I was under immense pressure to contest. Even as I was walking into the hall, people were still calling me, suggesting that I should contest. But my response was, and still is, 
if it's not broken, why mend it? And so if you see someone who is doing much of what you would have done, so why is it just as a personal thing, just that it is Saluda and they um, say it, Obiana is doing a great job. And I think if he's already doing what we need to do, the, the duty that we have, and that's why I talked about new politics in Anambra State, is what I call statesmanship politics. It don't have to every time, you know, it has to change. It has to be me, I, and myself. It has to be the public good. God has blessed me immensely. So, Prof, you are saying that will you be not deserve to be re-elected? And on what basis? I said, it's in my lecture, if it's not broken, why mend it? And um, it's not just me saying that William Obiano deserves to be re-elected. I think Anambra people have decided that they have Really? I mean, and some I people will say, and I, and I, so, sorry, I was wrong. I mean, and some I people know, will I say, and I, and I, so, sorry, I was wrong, Cotton, because a lot of people will disagree with you. A lot of the critics of this government will say, no, it's probably not, a, I mean, not living uh, to expectation of some of the things that they would love him to have done. So in what area are you talking about in specific? In the history of Anambra politics, there has never been a time where there has been as much consensus as there is today, even across all political divide and across all the political parties, that this man deserves to be re-elected. Literally anybody who, everybody who is anybody in this state has endorsed him. The people of Anambra, unprecedented, it hasn't happened before, have a unanimity in this. Everybody seems to be, or at least let me say, 70% or thereabout of the people are rooting for him. Because for the first time in Anambra, we really now have a governor. I mean, first of all, there is a continuity. Apuga government in Anambra has, over the last 11 years plus, given Anambra consistency and continuity and a kind of progressive governance that Anambra has not had before. So there is something to do with the party in power, in a sense. Peter B started off implementing the APGA manifesto, APGA programs, intervened at the micro level, essentially, largely on infrastructure. Governor Willie Obiano has taken it to the next level by combining both the macro and the micro. He's dealing with the infrastructure, is dealing with the institutional, uh, institutionalization of governance, building institutions, building to last. But more fundamentally, he understands the key drivers of sustainable development. And that is why one thing no Anambra person would dispute, even his harshest critics, is the fact that in terms of security of life and property, Anambra in its history has not had it so good. Because you talked about projects and infrastructure. This is a oh, man, I mean, his critics also says that he makes some concentration in some areas, leaving some areas. And in those areas, who, which is going to, questions are going to be asked at the polls is why would they vote for him? Let's put it in context. And I'll answer you in two, three um, points on this. The first is... I don't think it is true. Well, relatively, comparatively, you see, everybody in this country would expect, I want road in my village. Everybody wants a road in his village. Is it true or not? That's precisely true. But you've got to think about the indicators yourself. This is a governor whom, as he assumed office, had about 101 roads that were commissioned by his predecessor on the eve of departure. And he has also continued them. Now completed about 51 of those roads. In addition to the many new ones he has started and completed. I'll talk about concentration in terms of the zone or whatever, uh, as it were. 
the fact that he's even continuing with them and building infrastructure and roads in Anambra at a time when most states in the Federation are owing eight, nine, ten months of salary. They can't even pay salary. At a time Nigeria was in recession. At a time the oil price fell from our being 147, 120 something and so on to 40, 36 dollars per barrel. He happened to be one of the states, one of the governors in, in the state, in the country that have consistently been paying uh, salaries. And in addition, implementing the over 100 projects left by his predecessor on the eve of departure, with 6,000 new workers put on the payroll on the eve of departure of his uh, predecessor, paying them and even increasing their salary. They call him the alert governor with regards to that. But very fundamentally, it's also the guy who has been able to bring the security level, which is the most important thing you require for wealth creation in a place like this at an all-time best level. Do you think Obiano can win this election? It's not whether he can. For the first time, I think, since the Anambra politics, I actually believe, and most Anambra people expect that it's going to be a landslide. Really? Yes. In fact, if it isn't, if he wins by just about, if he wins by 60%, many people will still worry that something may have happened here. Let me give you some political realities, Professor. Um, first and foremost, in a zone where it comes from, there are some heavyweights that are battling votes with him in that zone. That's a false threat in his home front. Not to talk about some other threat that comes into areas where larger votes are earned in an election in a number of states. And a lot of political analysts will be wondering where Obiano wants to get the votes from. If he has a big threat on his shoulder, in his home front, in the senatorial district where he comes from. Um, I think um, on paper, what you said doesn't even hold. First and foremost, when he got elected, the heavyweight that you talk, one heavyweight that you talk about, also, I mean, so-called, quote and unquote, those battling the um, election with him, comes actually from his own local government. He beat him silly in the first time. And the second time, in that local government, but let's not go beyond that. This second time, if he gets less than 80% of the votes there, we'll be surprised. I can't see any one of them in an election if votes will matter. If a number of people go to the polls to cast their vote, I can't see any of those so-called heavyweights getting more than 10, 15 percent of the votes. None. The implications of this election for the All Progressive Grand Alliance is very enormous. This is the only state that the party controls. Should Obiano you know, lose this election, what do you see? First and foremost, I will say, God forbid, uh, to the premise, um, he cannot lose the election. That's a conversation with Professor Charles Soludo. Well, we will give you the full length of that interview on our website. It's about a half an hour, half hour long. But we'll take a moment on the program. We'll hear from yet another party that seems to be as sure as the APGA in this race. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. <laughs>